Democrats, and welcome to a very special online version of our April monthly meeting. I'm Jill Kayazo, the chair of the Arlington Democrats, and I am delighted to be with you here in your homes this evening. We are in a very strange time, and so I'm welcoming you to resisting while social distancing. Uh, during this public health crisis, I want to assure you that Arlington Democrats are going to be there with you every step of the way, making connections within the community as we always have, and also finding ways to ensure that democratic values and democratic candidates are advanced even from working from our homes. So thank you for joining tonight, and thank you for all that you are doing to support our community and also to support Democrats during our march to November. I want to note that all of the in-person meetings of the Arlington Democrats have been canceled through the end of April, but nevertheless, we will persist. As you will hear tonight, we have lots of great events and activities that are available to you right from your home. We want to make sure that we stay engaged with you and that you feel fulfilled um, on your journey to November, and so just want to make sure that you have that information at your fingertips. And in that same vein, I want to move to our first agenda item, which is our flash social media challenge or call to action. And we are focusing this month on getting information out about the new Arlington Democrats COVID-19 resources page. Um, so if you go to Facebook and look at the Arlington Democrats page, you will see pinned to the top there a post that looks an awful lot like what you see on your screens here today. What we're asking you to do is to hit share or to like this particular post so you can share information into your network about this COVID-19 resources page that the Arlington Democrats have put together. So why might you want to go to this page? There is just lots of information here that can uh, see you through these challenging times. First, we've got some information about the disease itself and symptoms um, with great linked information from the CDC and other organizations. We've also got activities on this page that you can do from home to dump Trump to help in the resistance effort. In addition, we want to make sure that we're always supporting our community, and so we have ways for you to connect with neighbors that are in need, as well as to sign up if you need some help from volunteers that we have on the ready uh, to work in the community. There's that and more on this page. I think I've spread this out enough that hopefully you'll have had an opportunity to hit share or like. We really appreciate that you do that. We want to absolutely make sure that if folks are sitting home alone, that they're not lonely, that they know that the Arlington Democrats have great activities and events ready for them. So thank you very much for sharing that content. It really does make a difference. We look forward to seeing folks uh, come online and, and help out with these terrific events and activities. So I want to move us along to our next agenda item. That is going to be an outreach update. And I want to turn things over to our terrific acting chair of outreach, Mike Heminger, to let us know what's happening with respect to all of our outreach activities. Mike? Thank you, Jill, and good evening, fellow Arlington Democrats. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. My name is Mike Heminger, and I'm here to provide an update on outreach. Like many of the other functional areas that you'll hear from tonight, we are focused on keeping our community safe while still ambitiously going after our goals that we have set as an organization. We are collaborating and thinking creatively on ways to leverage technology to accomplish these goals. As such, farmers markets and festivals are currently being paused as we assess the best way to engage these groups. Quick update from Blue Families. Josh is leading the charge and looking into other possible uh, targets on the postcard and letter writing campaign. A group named Reclaim Our Vote comes highly recommended. They are focused on re-registering voters in the Sunbelt states, including Texas, Alabama, uh, Arizona, Georgia, and North Carolina, where we have seen massive voter purges. Blue Families has set an ambitious goal of writing 20,000 postcards to be mailed out later in this year. With your newfound time at home, please consider writing a few postcards for the ultimate cause of defeating Donald Trump in November. For more information, please email josh at families at arlingtondemocrats.org. A quick update from Business and Labor, they had 18 people on their recent Zoom call, including local party activists, AYD activists, Margo Horner, members of the AEA, firefighters, AFSCME, carpenters, laborers, operating engineers, pipe trades, electricians, and union retirees. The first half of the meeting was focused on the situation with Didlake um, at the Arlington National Guard Armory. We've heard from two workers, including Arlington resident Oscar Martinez, 
talking about the company, company's mishandling of the pandemic. The company is giving confusing and conflicting safety instructions to the workers, and in many cases, giving no training on the proper use of gloves and masks. The workers are afraid to speak up because they fear they will be sent home with no pay. The public employee unions talked about the importance of the collective bargaining legislation to county workers, but also expressed some concerns around the state of the county budget after the crisis passes. The firefighters union is worried about members exposed to the virus and are working with management on the issue. The building trades union reported that their members are continuing to work and employees are generally doing a good job at keeping people safe. They are looking forward to working with the caucus to implement the legislation passed by the General, General Assembly, including project labor agreements and prevailing wage. As you can see, the current focus in labor is staying safe at work. While some of us are working from home, many others are still out on the front lines serving, protecting us, and providing for their families as well. Please keep them in mind during uh, this time of extraordinary crisis. In the Black Caucus, they are currently in the formation phase of the caucus and they will meet again when possible. Next slide, please. The Seder has been canceled until further notice. A quick update from the American Muslim Caucus. As far as American Muslim outreach, we are beginning uh, the organization of the interfaith iftar and the Eid at the moment. We are in the process of organizing various issue-based fora. We are organizing our second caucus meeting soon which will also be virtual. We will have more details after the next organizational meeting, which will be occurring next week. Please stay tuned. Within military and uh, veterans, the next meeting will also be virtual and is occurring on April 25th at 10 a.m. Please see the Arlington Dems Facebook events page and the online calendar for more information. An update from AAPI. The leaders of the AAPI caucus are getting organized to formulate our structure and to identify priorities and initiatives regarding how best to represent and further the interests of our caucus. We have a group, group of very charged and passionate AAPI advocates that welcome any community supporters and leaders. Thank you, Jill. Thank you so much, Mike, for that terrific outreach update. It is great to see that outreach remains extremely active. Our caucuses remain a terrific way to uh, interact with community members about issues of, of major interest to you. So I greatly encourage everyone to check out our Facebook event page as well as our online calendar for information about our caucus events and encourage everyone to get involved. Thank you again, Mike. We're going to move on to our next agenda item that is Beyond Arlington and I'm going to turn things over to Steve Baker to let us know how we can get engaged with races outside of Arlington. Steve? Thank you so much, Jill. This is uh, Steve Baker with Beyond Arlington. And if you are committed to dumping Trump, if you are committed to flipping the Senate, if you are committed to winning uh, some upcoming uh, special elections like Wisconsin House seat number seven or Virginia local elections or returning our Democratic delegation to Congress in the fall, you want to be a part of Beyond Arlington's phone bank from home effort. Uh, next slide. You can uh, campaign in the comfort and safety of your own home. We're going to work on a, on a number of campaigns. Um, this is absolutely the only way that you can have direct voter contact under the current COVID crisis. So it's very important uh, campaign effort. Many campaigns have suspended at present their, their canvassing efforts. So this is the one way we can reach voters now. Um, we will be using Zoom as a, uh, as a way to kind of network and help get people set up on the phone banks. Um, once you're set up, we're gonna leave everyone to make calls. Our, uh, our Zoom meetings will be every Tuesday and Thursday, just like our Beyond Arlington phone banks. Uh, next slide. Amongst the races that we're working on, we're currently making calls for the Arizona, uh, Mark Kelly for U.S. Senate race. Uh, we've got phone calls for this Wisconsin special election. It's the former Dave Obie seat. Uh, Tricia Zunker is the candidate. 
for a May 12th special election. There is also a, a Wisconsin Supreme Court election that's going to happen in just seven days. So these calls have critical urgency. Um, some of the phone banks were, will probably soon start dialing for Abigail Spanberger. She has kind of a COVID related check in on your neighbor phone bank. Uh, we're going to be doing that. You can find all of our events on our Beyond Arlington Facebook page or through our email. If you're not signed up currently to receive our email, go to uh, the Arlington Democrats webpage, go to volunteers and sign up for Beyond Arlington there. Look forward to hearing from all of you and thank you so much for your efforts on behalf of Beyond Arlington and all that you're doing on behalf of Arlington Democrats during these difficult times. Back to you, Jill. Thank you so much, Steve, and thank you for making all of those opportunities available to our volunteers during this, these very strange times. Steve's got the opportunities for you. We just need folks to, to sign up to make those phone calls. Uh, I think we've learned from past years that uh, we can really make a very significant difference with respect to special elections. And I know folks don't necessarily love to phone bank, but I got to tell you from personal experience with, with working with Steve's great organization, there's nothing better than phone banking into a special election because folks are so happy to have the information that they, that they even have an election coming up. Um, they often don't know that. So rather than being a nuisance, they're, they're really excited to have the information that you're sharing with them. And I think especially now, because folks are feeling quite isolated, that they're more likely to answer their phones and have a good conversation with you about why we should be electing Democrats into those seats. So thank you, Steve, for making those opportunities available. Please, folks, sign up with Steve, and let's, let's flip some more seats uh, beyond Arlington. So with that, we're going to move to our next agenda item, which is coming back to Arlington to talk a little bit about finance. Uh, we have a, an upcoming event uh, that many that many of you were looking forward to. I'm still looking forward to it, and uh, we're going to hear why I'm still looking forward to it from our terrific finance chair, Liz Morgan. Over to you, Liz. Thank you, Jill. Um, on Saturday, this coming Saturday, we, we would have all been gathering together uh, at the Westin in Boston for our annual Blue Victory Dinner. This year's theme is finish our fight. Um, as we uh, headed toward another year of victory uh, at the polls. Um, unfortunately, because of the circumstances, we won't be able to be in person for the dinner. Um, but we are still uh, we are still going to be making some of the content from that dinner available um, via web, the web, via the, via the web uh, to everyone who has purchased tickets. We want to thank everyone uh, who has done that, uh, as well as our sponsors for the event. Um, so if, if you have purchased tickets for the event, please, please stay tuned to your email. You'll be getting information about how to access the content. Uh, we'll have the remarks from uh, former Secretary of Homeland Security, Jay Johnson. Uh, very, very timely for, for, for our times. Um, we'll also be by video having um, several uh, uh, of our grassroots partners here in Arlington present uh, our annual um, Volunteers of the Year Awards. Um, great opportunities to recognize uh, several members of Arlington Democrats who've gone above and beyond for us in the last year. Um, we'll also have some remarks uh, uh, from Jill. And again, we'll be recognizing, uh, we'll be recognizing our uh, event sponsors. Uh, we want to thank our, our, our silver sponsors um, uh, for the year. Um, I also want to thank our event co-chairs, uh, Sarah Steinberger, Kate Froelich, and Declan Stone, um, who've now essentially worked to um, to present, uh, to, to prepare two events, uh, <laughs> to be ready to present the in-person event, um, as well as to produce the virtual event for everyone. Um, uh, a number of other folks who had volunteered to help with the event, everyone who's purchased tickets, um, and also to our partners at the Westin Gateway. Um, we're grateful for their, for their support and flexibility. Um, and we will be planning to have our uh, Blue Victory Dinner 2021 um, at the, at the Westin again in Boston. So uh, thanks to everyone 
um, for staying on board with us. This is uh, one of our biggest fundraisers of the year. We're sorry we can't be together, um, but please enjoy uh, enjoy the, the the content and the presentations that we'll we'll show you on Saturday, um, and that hopeful hopefully will inspire us um, for the next few months as we as we work toward the November 2020 election. Thank you, Jill. Thanks so much, Liz, and thank you to you, Sarah, Kate, and Declan for the tremendous work on the Blue Victory Dinner. Um, I'm already inspired. This team turned on a dime and said, okay, you know, the, the party still needs the funds to beat Trump in November. We are going to execute this event virtually. I'm really grateful for the team's effort to pull this off as the first of a kind and for our Blue Victory Dinner. I'm also really grateful to our sponsors and ticket holders. We had very few folks ask for refunds which are totally understandable in these very difficult times. But for those who were able to allow us to retain the funds from the Blue Victory Dinner, I wanna say thank you. We will put these funds to good use this year in defeating Donald Trump and electing Democrats up and down the ballot inside of Arlington and beyond. So thank you very much to the team, to everyone coming together to make sure that the Arlington Democrats has the funds that we need to get to success in November. So thank you team for that. Um, and we're going to look forward to a really exciting uh, virtual experience on Saturday. So stay tuned uh, for the for the link uh, for our, our ticket buyers for that. So thanks very much. We're going to move on to our next agenda item. And next up is our voter support group, um, which is the group that really focuses on making sure that our, our voters here in Arlington have the information and the registrations that they need to succeed. Um, and I'm going to turn things over to Marsha Johnson to give us an update on, uh, and really to provide some great information for our voters. Marsha? Marsha, you're up. Hello? Marsha? Yeah, okay. Yes, we can hear Hey everyone, uh, glad you guys are joining us. So basically, um, everyone knows about yesterday's order. And one of the things that's done, we are now in the voting in time of cholera. So um, basically with the June 10th lockdown, we have a primary, if you guys remember, federal and local races, the board and Senate race and I mean, um, Democrats don't have a, um, Senator Warner doesn't have a challenger, but um, any case, uh, we have a primary June 9th, especially for Arlington County Board, and we don't know right now if it's going to have any in-person component at all. So, in the meantime, next slide, please. We want to bring the vote home in more ways than one. This is, I like this, this term because it both speaks to doing it at home, but also so making sure we have a huge turnout anyway, whether it's online or in person or by mail. So um, I gave a screenshot of the page and this is a, a bit.ly address if you want to look it up, but it's very easy, Department of Elections, just look up to um, request your absentee ballot. We are just encouraging everyone to, for, especially for the June 9th primary, to request your absentee ballot now. And I will tell you, I did it this morning. So for those of you that might be concerned, you don't wanna do it all the time, it's not a permanent thing. Normally, Virginia is just one election. However, I did it today. And what you find is that when you go to do it, it actually allows you to choose either just the June primary, Democratic primary, the June Republican primary, um, and or the November election. So it's giving you the option to choose all of them. So already. And then it will tell you once you've done that, whichever one you want to do or all three or just sorry, not all three, two or just one, then you go on and then it says for the reason it'll also give you a prompt. It says for the reason, um, please pick illness disability for COVID-19. So then you put it in and it says submitted. And so the deadline to request your absentee ballot for the June 9th primary is June 2nd, which is, uh, you know, pretty late. We just hope that um, everyone will do this. And the sooner you do it, the better for the registrar. This is something I've been communicating to people. Um, what we're trying to do is flatten that curve as well, because if they're going to get a whole lot of requests, 
It's better that they're spread out over time as opposed to at the last minute. So we urge everyone to do that right away. Um, and again, you can choose to vote June and November if you care to. So next uh, ballot, please, or next, uh, sorry, next slide, last one, or second to last one. Um, we also, the other thing that we'd also like to do is get people registered to vote electronically, as we don't actually know how much canvassing we're going to be able to do in the next couple of months. Um, when we do a lot of our voter registration, um, we just want people to use social media so that they know that they can register electronically. Um, it's, it's easy. Um, they can also print an application, fill it out, mail it in, or drop it off. Again, no sort of personal contact, but you can, can do that. So this is something we're going to be really emphasizing over the next weeks, months, is to get people to register to vote online. So next slide, please. And with that in mind, um, Phoebe uh, Carlson, who's our voter reg chair, she is going to be setting up a, an online voter reg training and wants anyone who is interested to do that to please just send her a little email at voter underscore registration at arlingtondemocrats.org. And that's where we are now. Thank you. Thanks so much, Marsha. Really appreciate that great information. Want to remind folks that we always make these slides available online. So we will be posting these to our website and all of the information that Marsha has linked there will be at your fingertips. We want to encourage everyone, of course, to vote early and often. Um, but with respect to the June 9th primary, we're asking folks to request your absentee ballot now. Don't take the risk. Let's just well, we will just ask for uh, absentee by mail and we'll get it done that way. That way we are protecting the public health and we're also getting the vote done. So you heard it here first. Um, June 9th is coming. Request your absentee ballot now and we will make these links available to you. Thank you so much, Marcia, for that information. We're going to move on to our next agenda item and I'm delighted to turn things over to our most important partner in the county the Arlington Young Democrats for an update about the amazing work that they have been doing during this time of public crisis, of health crisis. So with that, let me turn it over to the president of the AYDs, um, Dan Matthews, as well as Mike Heminger, the party rep. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Um, I just wanted to um, say on behalf of the Arlington Young Democrats, thank you so much to the Arlington Democrats for everything that you've been doing so far uh, in this crisis. I don't think any of us uh, I have a playbook for how to deal with this, but uh, it's just been so great to have such a lovely partner um, and such a powerful partner um, throughout this crisis. So uh, that's all from me. I'll hand it over to our party representative, Mike, to uh, give our update. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Um, in light of the current situation, all in-person AYDE, I'm sorry, all in-person AYD events have been canceled and many of these events have transitioned to an online or digital format. Uh, next slide, please. On Tuesday, we had our first of several online town halls. The event was hosted by County Board Member Katie Crystal, where she discussed many of the initiatives that are currently underway in Arlington. Uh, the town hall was hosted by our Vice President, uh, Matt Royer, and Katie answered questions from the community. It was uh, uh, really spectacular to see. Next slide, please. There will be several of these uh, same style virtual town halls coming up um, with community leaders and experts, uh, each uh, will be occurring on the next uh, four Tuesdays at approximately 7 p.m. Um, some of the upcoming speakers include uh, Praveen Mayan, who will be discussing the impacts of COVID-19 on the Asian American and Pacific Islander community. Um, Eric Feigl-Dean, who many of you have seen on local and national media platforms, uh, will be talking, uh, we'll be hearing from State Senator Adam Eben on the 21st, and our uh, Labor Caucus Chair, Adam Chaikov will be giving a labor update um, at the end of the month. Uh, for more information about these upcoming events or to see a replay of Tuesday's town hall, please visit the AYD Facebook page at Arlington. Um, please visit our website, excuse me, at arlingtonyoungdems.org. Uh, next slide, please. All right, we've launched a COVID-19 resource hub. You can find many helpful resources and information. Uh, by visiting arlingtonyoungdems.org forward slash COVID-19. Uh, next slide, please. We've also started a community donation fund to help those most in need uh, during this time. Please consider making a donation to our fund by visiting secure.actblue.com 
forward slash donate forward slash AYD COVID. These, forms, uh, these funds will be equally provided to the following four organizations within Arlington, um, Arlington Food Assistance Program, the Arlington Partnership for Affordable Housing, Arlington Thrive Relief Fund, and the Arlington Free Clinic. Um, it's been pretty remarkable watching Arlington come together in support of our community, and we hope that you'll consider making a donation if you're so able to these important causes. Next slide, please. In light of recent rhetoric coming out of the White House and in our communities, Arlington Young's, Young Dems has issued a joint statement with the Democratic Asian Americans of Virginia, Virginia Caucus. Arlington Young Dems stands in complete solidarity with the Democratic Asian Americans of Virginia to condemn recent hate speech and recent hate crimes. These acts of hatred and violence have no place in our society and AYD is committed to making, uh, committed to working to correct them. Next slide, please. Over the last couple of days, we've also passed a couple uh, resolutions. The first one is the People's Bailout, and uh, that's um, in an effort to support our most vulnerable communities. Arlington Young Dems has passed a resolution to support the People's Bailout. Um, it centers on five key principles. Um, health is a top priority for all people with no exceptions. Economic relief must be provided directly to the people. Rescue workers and communities, not corporate executives make a down payment on regenerative in, uh, economy while preventing future crises, protect our democratic process while protecting each, uh, each other. AYD encourages all groups and their members to sign on to the people's bailout and to contact their representatives and senators to pursue these principles in Congress. Uh, the second one uh, pertained to gig wage and healthcare workers. Um, as our economy fights through the COVID-19 outbreak, we must not forget those uh, who are facing the biggest threats of their jobs and uh, being forced into poverty. Because of this, the Arlington Young Dems are committed to our service industry, gig economy, tipped wage and healthcare workers through pushing uh, for new legislation in addition to compiling resources for those in need. Um, AYD working with SEIU Virginia 512 and other members of these industries has come with the following resolution to call on Congress and Governor Ralph Northam to do the most that they can to aid these struggling individuals and their families. We need to continue to lift each other up and push our elected officials to act in the best interest of all constituents. Next slide, please. On a lighter note, uh, we started virtual movie nights. Uh, they're now underway. We've had our first online movie experience where we welcome them, uh, members of the community and watch the movie Moonlight. We'll continue this experience every Sunday night at 7 p.m. For a full list of upcoming showings or more information about joining the virtual movie experience, please visit the AYD Facebook page. Next slide, please. Here you'll see, as always, we have our AYD swag available. You can uh, find these on our website or our Facebook page. And the last slide is just uh, ways to stay in contact with us. We have our Facebook and all our social media, as well as our website. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mike. I really appreciate all the work that you, Dan, uh, Matt, and everyone at, at AYD has been doing. It's really, I think, terrific uh, to see the, the interesting ideas that you have and how well they complement some of the activities that the, the main party is doing. And, and together, I think we're really able to, to put a lot of great opportunities out there for folks during this very strange time when they're stuck at home uh, to stay connected with the community and, and to, to stay connected with the issues that matter. So thank you for all that you're doing, and we look forward to partnering with you on, on many more events over the coming weeks as we as we resist from our home. I want to move us along to uh, the next point in our agenda, which is upcoming events. And we do have a few things um, that are uh, happening that we want to make, that we have not yet covered, we want to make sure you're aware of. The first one is actually happening today. Um, today is Census Day. So we're doing a check-in with folks to make sure that you have taken some of the time that you have on your hands at home to go ahead and fill out that census so that you should have received in the mail by now. So we're doing a check-in. Have you gotten it? Have you filled it out? If you have, thumbs up. Great job. But if you haven't yet, let's do that. Let's take a minute right now to make sure you know where that letter is and that you get it filled out. Right now, the county reports that we are at about 30% return rate for the census. Not bad, but Arlington, I know we can do better. Um, so please, fill out your census, do it today, make sure you cover everybody in your household, because this could not be more important to 
the money that Arlington County, the, the state of Virginia will receive from the federal government, um, from our representatives in Congress. I mean, there's just a lot of different things that, uh, that reference census data. So let's make sure it's as accurate as possible. Please complete your census. And as promised, on the topic of the census, we have our second social media call to action here today. So we don't normally do two, but the census is so important that we are going ahead and doing a second call to action. I'm going to ask you to grab your cell phone or go to your Facebook page on your browser and look again at the top of the Arlington Democrats Facebook page. We've pinned a new, a new post there. It looks something like what you're seeing on your screen here today. We would like your help in making sure that everyone in your network knows that today, April 1st, is Census Day and really encourage folks to get those censuses completed. So again, when you find that post, click share, maybe put a, a quick uh, note of your own in there about how you completed the census and, you know, how about you? Um, and Or perhaps like the post, either way, uh, and get that out there and let's make sure that everyone is counted here in Arlington. So thank you so much for for recognizing and honoring April 1st as Census Day, and let's uh, let's see if we can move the needle on that 34% uh, just by virtue of all the folks that are tuning in here today to watch the, the monthly meeting. Also in terms of upcoming events, um, we have uh, instituted a new virtual happy hour that's going to be happening every Thursday during the period of social distancing. So for the foreseeable future, um, please tune in on Thursday nights, uh, either six or seven o'clock. Uh, we're, we're using, we're being flexible on the start time to match the schedules of our special guests. Uh, so I was the special guest for our first one. It was Cheers with the Chair. I'm hoping that we'll have mocktails with Maggie at some point um, soon. But every Thursday night, uh, we are going to be doing a Zoom meeting uh, virtual happy hour. So if you go to the Arlington Democrats Facebook event page or our online calendar, you can get information about how to join that Zoom event. It was a lot of fun, um, and we just, you know, we just chit-chatted, and, uh, you know, that's basically, we want to make sure that folks are, are doing okay and having those sorts of social conversations, and we're happy to facilitate that. So I hope to see you this coming Thursday um, for our next virtual happy hour, and it should be a lot of fun. In the same vein, for those who don't drink or maybe, you know, just uh, are, are really morning people, we're doing morning mugs every Saturday morning of the period of social distancing. Um, so we did the last one, uh, this or our first one rather, this past Saturday, um, and we were delighted to have our Commonwealth Attorney, Parisa Dagani Tassi, as our special guest. Um, we started that one at nine o'clock and quickly realized nobody wants to do a morning mug at nine o'clock. Um, so we are moving these events to 10 a.m. and uh, we think that, that we still had a lot of fun for those who did join us. Um, but we definitely got a lot more people on the back end of the hour, so we are going to uh, start doing these events at 10 a.m. But again, you know, you just grab your tea, your, your orange juice, what have you, and just sit around and chit-chat. And uh, we've got a great group of Democrats here in Arlington, more joining every day, and they're just really fun to talk with. So don't be home alone and sad. Come on and join our Zoom meetings and talk with some great folks. Share your ideas. Share your concerns. We're here for you. Um, and please join us for these, these great events, which will be going on every week for the foreseeable future. Also coming up, which is a little bit of a change of pace, the Democratic Convention process rolls on. Um, unclear how, what that's going to look like this year because we are in, in this period of social distancing. I want to first assure you that from the very top of the party on down, folks are looking very carefully at this process to make sure that it proceeds in a way that emphasizes public safety and public health. Um, and so there, not all the changes have been announced, but I fully expect that we will see some more changes coming up with respect to this process. One change that has been announced that affects Arlington and all of the jurisdictions in Virginia is how we run our caucus for selecting delegates who represent Arlington, uh, both at the congressional district level and at the state level. That has moved from an in-person process to an online process. I will not bore you with all of the details, largely because I get them wrong every time I try to describe them verbally. What I am going to do is direct you to our website, arlingtondemocrats.org forward slash delegate, which has lots of information about the convention process. It also has links to how you sign up to be a delegate um, or an alternate. That's also an option. And it has, importantly, the, the filing deadline. And the one filing deadline that's coming up pretty quickly here is April 7th. 
If you are interested in being an Arlington delegate or an Arlington alternate, or to vote for people who want to be Arlington delegates or Arlington alternates, you must file uh, some paperwork that's on our website by April 7th. So please check it out. I will say that we've gotten a lot of interest uh, from the Biden camp, um, not as much from the Sanders and Warren camp. So if you're in those two camps, please definitely check out the website and, and sign up to be a delegate. I also want to emphasize that if we have an oversubscribed number of people in any of the camps, we will actually have to run an election to determine who will be the delegates or the alternate. Um, so that we will see what happens there. We will be publishing more information about that. Should we have to do that, it will be conducted online. This information is on that website, so please check it out if the convention process is of, is of interest to you. Our next upcoming event is one that's actually run by the state party, but it looked fantastic, and we, so we wanted to make sure that everyone here in Arlington was aware of it. Um, but on April 25th, the state party is going to be running its fifth annual Barbara Johns Panel on Civil Rights. Uh, they've got a great lineup this year, um, and it will be done completely online. So this is another great opportunity um, for you to, to get out of the, the stay-at-home doldrums and, and check out a terrific panel uh, that's going to be talking about civil rights issues right here in Virginia. So again, that's April 25th. Uh, please tune in for that. It should be a very interesting panel. Our next upcoming event, just want to put a placeholder here for your school board caucus. It is scheduled to happen in May. Um, which is, of course, during the period of social distancing. So we are working on uh, our plan for how to execute the school board caucus, and I'll just say now, more updates coming soon. So stay tuned, but absolutely this is top of mind, and you can rest assured that our elected Democrats are always going to put the public safety and public health first. Um, so there will be more to come with respect to the school board caucus next month. That brings us to our COVID-19 special report. For those of you who are uh, who come to our monthly meetings in person, you know we always like to do an activity. Um, well, we're a little bit ha uh, our hands are a little bit tied here today because we are all at home, and we've already done two social media calls to action. The activity that we thought we would do this month, instead of you know assembling letters or what have you, is to do a, a special report about COVID-19. Uh, we are going to be hearing today from two terrific speakers. Um, the first will be providing a, a, a public health update. Um, he, his name is Eric, Dr. Eric Feigl Ding. He is an epi epidemiologist. Uh, you've seen him on CNN. He also happens to be the secretary of the Arlington Democrats. Um, and so he'll be providing an update from a public health perspective about what's happening out there uh, with respect to COVID-19. And then the second half of our special report will be a, a special update from our county board chair, Libby Garvey, who's going to be talking about the COVID-19 impact in Arlington and what Arlington is doing to respond. Um, so with that, I am going to turn things over to uh, Eric and Libby. And Libby, Thanks. why don't we hear from? And Libby, Thanks. why don't we hear from you? You want me to go first? I'm happy to do that. Thank you, yes. Jill. Thank Can you, you see me yes. okay? Great. Hear me okay? Yeah. Let me know where you go. Okay, great. And I just I, I want to thank you so much. One for the the census shout out. That really is really so important. So thank you so much for doing that. Really appreciate it. Um, and I like to thank you and Maggie and everybody. It's so nice to kind of feel together with people, even though we're separated. Uh, and have, thanks so much for making this virtual meeting happen. I thought what I'd try to do is just give a quick high level summary and then we'll get to the doctor. Um, so one of the things I wanna kind of emphasize for folks a little bit is actually this region has long been preparing for a pandemic. Um, we have long had a regional in Arlington stockpile of emergency equipment gear like PPE. Um, and in fact, in January started collecting more um, that said, of course, um, as our other speaker, I'm sure is aware, thinking about and preparing generally for something like a pandemic is really different from actually responding to one. So our public health and emergency management teams have been working pretty much flat out since January when they saw this coming pretty clearly. Our manager and his team have been repurposing employees and resources. The very carefully prepared 400 plus page budget is out the window. And we'll probably get a 10 page uh, budget or smaller in about a week or so, and we'll adopt that. And then simply so we can move forward, we'll of course have to make budget adjustments throughout the year. Um, and I just like to say, I am so impressed with what I see from our county government leadership, our employees, our nonprofits, our residents, our volunteers, like all folks with, with, a, with uh, Arlington Democrats. We're all struggling to 
really meet the ever-changing needs of this crisis. Um, and in, in some, I kind of, just to start, I wanted just to assure people that you're in really good hands here in Arlington. Um, I think we've, we're pretty well prepared. We're doing a lot, we're doing everything we can, um, but this is no small, this is no small challenge. Um, so at the moment, we've got two main concerns as far as your board goes. The first is medical. Uh, we are working with the Northern Virginia region, um, uh, with uh, coordinating with the region and the Virginia Department of Health and the Army Corps of Engineer to work on setting up hospital surge capacity in Northern Virginia. Um, a number of possible sites have been identified. Nothing's quite picked yet. This is not easy, but the biggest problem is not going to be so much getting the facility online, but actually having the medical personnel to staff it. And I look forward to hearing from the doctor when, when we get to the next speaker. Um, the second big issue we're most focusing on is food. Uh, we're working to make sure that everyone in the county who needs food can get it. Uh, we're working with AFAC to set up food distribution centers in the county beyond what they've done so far and have usually done. We're working with APA, APA you know, uh, the um, housing, housing assistance groups for distributions within the buildings um, to get to their tenants. And we're working using our ART bus system to get people who can't get to food distribution areas to get there on the bus and get them back home again. Uh, if they're not able to get there themselves. Schools are delivering meals to students at a few locations, but that system they've been doing still le leaves out at least 30% of the children and of course their families, PTAs are stepping up, but they are getting increasingly stressed. So the food issue is going to get bigger and not smaller. Uh, we're working now, and I think we just got fixed uh, set this evening, which we're recording on the 31st, um, a system we're gonna get up and running so that pretty much anyone in the county who needs food and can't get out to get it, can call in and ask for it and we have to find a way to deliver it to them. We've got to work out that system to locate those folks, deliver that food um, and get the food. We're working with the federal USDA and others to be able to get the food. Third issue, uh, main but not quite on the front burner, is doing what we can to make sure that not only our residents but also our small businesses survive this as well. Um, this obviously is both a medical and an economic crisis. So the board just voted on Monday to um, make it so that some stores that were prevented from doing so before can now do curbside takeout businesses. Um, we put up a long list, which I'd urge people to look at on our website. If you wanna to go to the next slide, that would probably be good. People get tired of looking at me there. <laughs> but anyway, we've got a list of, on this website, our COVID website, restaurants offering takeout, We've been holding webinars for small businesses to help them get through this and we're trying to figure out of course what the whole new federal um, funding is going to is going to mean for us and how to get that to our businesses but that's going to take a while to figure out um like to assure people there's a lot of coordination going on uh obviously this pandemic is everywhere uh the manager has daily briefings with his emergency team in the morning and that includes our schools his own executive team he meets with and then he's on regional calls with his regional counterparts um, the board and myself, we get updates about twice a day from our staff about what's going on. And of course, on the political level, my board colleagues I know are in touch with our regional colleagues, counterparts, and, um, and organizations. I'm on a twice weekly call with my fellow mayors and chairs in the region. One of our frustrations, I'll just say, is that the governor keeps making really major orders and not letting us know, um, but we're hoping to persuade him to you know, communicate with us just a little more. Um, my colleagues and I are all in touch with many of you um, and the volunteer efforts that are springing up and bringing all of these efforts actually and information back to the manager as appropriate. So we can leverage all the resources we have, both official and community-based. I know everybody wants to do what they can do to help. So thank you, everybody. So there's some great nonprofits. I was asked how you can help. You can always go on, you know, if you look on our website on Volunteer Arlington, there are lots and lots of uh, um, folks listed there, different organizations. They're the ones that we've had for a long time listed here. You know, Volunteer Arlington, there's AFAC, Community Foundation, Medical Reserve Corps. For those of you who have medical training, please do go on. Um, Arlington Neighborhood Villages handles the older folks. Then there's some new social media groups coming up. There's Arlington Community Corps. On Facebook, there's Arlington Neighbors Helping Each Other Through COVID-19. And everybody should look at their own neighbor list serve and next door. I'd like to emphasize, um, as we're doing this and wanting to help, that people really focus on the kinds of organizations. It might be social media, but they really connect with people. Then it, it gets down to the neighborhood and block level. Too many people don't participate in social media. And if you don't knock on their door or see them, nobody's gonna know what they need. So 
some groups um, like the Arlington Neighborhood Villages and the Arlington Community Corps are trying to address that and make sure that we know the people who don't happen to be on social media. Finally, just the most important thing you can do, next slide I think is the next one. Yeah, stay home as much as possible. So this just shows how the disease can spread and what just a few bits of social distancing, the huge difference it can make. Please, uh, you know, get out and help some, um, but please do stay at home and keep that distancing going up. Emotional distance, no, stay close like we're doing here, but physically please don't get close to other folks right now. So in, in some, we're essentially at war with this virus. This feels like a wartime footing and it is. Democratic values are more important now than ever. It's an all hands on deck moment. And I really wanna thank everyone for everything you are doing. Thank you so very much. Stay well. Thank you, Libby, for that great update and for all the work that you and the county board and the county government is doing uh, to keep us safe um, and to respond to this extraordinary crisis. I know there's no playbook for it and that you've been working pretty much around the clock for, for several weeks now and, and we're grateful. Keep up the good work, uh, very important in these times that all levels of government are functioning, especially given that the response to the national level hasn't been as robust as we'd like. So it's good to see that there has been such a strong and hands-on approach here in Arlington. So thank you for that. Um, we are gonna move on to our public health update, which is gonna be given by Dr. Eric Feigl Bing. And I'm gonna turn things over to him. So I'm just here to give a quick overview of what is going on with this COVID-19 epidemic. Many of you already know a lot about these details, but I want to really hammer home a few key messages that are important for the community. First of all, if there's anybody else who still thinks that this is just a flu, here's the best comparison. This is from a combination of CDC data as well as our latest tracking data on mortality by age. Notice that the mortality of the flu is on average 0.1% and almost non-existent for people under 65. Meanwhile, for COVID-19, the average mortality is one to 3%, but that number jumps very, very high um, once you're over the age of 55 and 65. And again, we have no vaccine, no one has any background immunity, and this is basically one of the most infectious viruses. It is two to three times more infectious than the flu, and it spreads asymptomatically. Up to 25% of all cases are actually asymptomatic, and you would not know that they're even sick. And yet they can still spread asymptomatically. So this is why it is not just the flu, everyone. Um, and in terms of not just deaths, but also hospitalizations, this is from the CDC, and it shows that the light blue bar here, that even young people who are relatively healthy, young adults, 20 to 44, actually still have a large number of hospitalizations. Lower deaths, but still large number of hospitalizations, and even ICUs as well. So this is, again, one of those... Um, messages that you're not invulnerable. And even if you do have mild to moderate, which is 80% of everyone, this is still a problem because you can still spread it and get hospitalized. This is uh, a graph of uh, the growth of uh, the different countries since 200 cases in one week. Um, that's the time zero. And you can see, let's just ignore the Asian countries for now. U.S. versus other countries, U.S. in terms of new cases has now surpa well surpassed over 100,000. We're like around 140, 150,000 right, right now. And in terms of deaths, U.S. is also catching up with Italy. Notice how Italy is already starting to round the curve. U.S. has not even slowed down enough. Um, and U.S. is definitely going to be one of the hardest hit countries. And some people ask, well, should you compare apples and oranges if Italy and European countries are much smaller? I would, I would posit this. What is more worrisome? Five cases in a small state like Arkansas or five cases in Manhattan? And that is my point. 
in, a, in certain places, five cases is actually much more dangerous than other locations, and especially in the US. And so in terms of different places with the fastest growth, this breaks down by cities and regions with the fastest. You can see New York is literally leading the world. And notice also it's a log scale. So all these lines means everything is exponential. They're not linear in any way. So if it was actually graph it out in true or natural format, it's really, really bad. And in doubling time, we used to talk about doubling time for this epidemic in the range of six days to seven days. Now the doubling time in the US is 2.7 days. Florida is 3.8, but again, Florida has a much severe problem because they have a lot of elderly who are very susceptible. And New York has a doubling time of two days. Two days for deaths, for the rising count of deaths. It is really, really out of control. And remember, when we talk about flattening the curve, we talk about flattening it so that hospitals are not overwhelmed because people really start dying once you peaked over capacity. And that's exactly what has happened to New York City. Um, and this is why New York is rising so quickly. And for those who are not um, attuned to different parts of the US, aside from New York, these are the metro areas that are having the worst increase in COVID-19. And the dark green is DC, Maryland, Virginia metro area. So we are, as a metro area, second only to New York City. And this is, again, very, very troublesome in terms of what could happen to us. We here in Northern Virginia, D.C. area, couldn't be the next New York City. And that is very worrisome. That is why the lockdown went in place just recently. But is it enough? We, we're not sure. And so here's a really great flow chart for everyone. Are you young? No, stay at home. Are you young and have a good immune system? No, stay at home. And are you have a young and have immune system? Yes, still stay at home, please. So um, it's the social distancing is really, really key. And I cannot say enough. There, there are different strategies we can do in terms of mitigation, but um, altogether, we are in this epidemic for quite some time. 2020 will be remembered for almost nothing else, I guarantee you, because this year will be the year of COVID-19. So I'm hopeful there are ways out of it. There's a lot of good testing on the horizon, but um, um, we need to be, we need to be vigilant. And as a community, we also have to think about getting as many people registered to vote by absentee because voting and congregating one area together will be a very, very tricky thing for this epidemic. So um, I'm looking forward to working with everyone to find strategies to make sure we can preserve our democracy at the same time, save our country from this calamity. So hopefully that's a good update and happy to take more questions uh, if, if anyone wants to send me messages. Eric, for that, we really appreciate it. That brings us to the end of our meeting. I want to end where we began, which is that uh, absolutely during this time of social distancing, uh, it's important that, that we stay connected and that we stay on target. The Arlington Democrats remain committed to electing Democrats up and down the ballot. We will resist while social distancing and encourage everyone to, to follow suit. Please go to our COVID-19 resource page for ways to stay connected with the community um, and check out our calendar and Facebook event page for all the great activities and events that were discussed here during our meeting tonight. I will see you online. Maybe I'll even see you at our virtual happy hour on Thursday. I want to thank all of our presenters and wish everyone a terrific evening. Take care.